Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Melissa. I am the owner and artist here at the Top Drawer RVA located in Richmond, Virginia. I'm also a Dixie Belle brand ambassador. And for today's project, we are going to take this broken, worn out little chest and make it over. As you can see by the condition of the veneer, this piece is actually particle board with a very cheap veneer overlay. I'm going to remove all the broken bits as much as I can, and then we're going to fill in that slight holes and marks with Dixie Belle's mud. This will give me a nice, smooth, flat surface for painting over top of. After I do that, I'm going to come in and actually brace the legs. These legs were really wobbly and were unable to be secured any further, so adding two new pieces of wood, which will be painted, it will look like they are natural and part of the chest. Simple, easy job with a nail gun. I applied some Dixie Bell's mud, let it get dry, sanded back, and we are ready to go. I hope you enjoy your video. Well, hello, Dixie Belle paint fans. How are you today? It is Melissa coming to you live from the Top Drawer RBA, where I'm live here every Wednesday at 3 p.m. to hang out and paint a new project. And I have one that's been sitting in my workroom for a little bit too long of a time. <laughs> it's because I'm struggling with it. I didn't know what to do with it. And today I thought, well, I will get it out, I will get it done, and we will make something happen with Terra Clay Paint. So welcome. If you are new joining me, watching me for the first time, you are more than welcome to drop in the comments below. Say hi, let me know where you're watching from. And if you're back again to hang out and see what I'm up to, welcome back, welcome back. So what do we got? We have a cabinet that, uh, ooh, she be rough. It's in rough shape, it's in rough shape. All right, so let's talk about this piece of furniture before we begin so that you know exactly what we're up against for this little piece. So this is a, a box. I purchased this at auction actually a long time ago. Um, I ended up having to peel off pretty much all the veneer on the bottom three quarters of this piece. You can see that this particle board underneath. This is not an antique. Don't freak out people. Everybody, every time I paint something that looks like weirdly shaped like this, everybody's like, oh, it's an antique, did you check? Yeah, you know what I checked? The particle board that's underneath the veneer. That's what tells me it's not an antique. All right, so it is missing some little nails, um, which I will add in when I'm done. And it had a whole bunch of veneer damage that I picked off, filled in with Dixie Bell's mud, and then sanded back to flat. I added in two braces on the sides for supports because this piece kind of, it was, the legs were a little, little wobbly. It's not because it's too heavy, but because the joints just couldn't be secured anymore. And it's missing some pieces. Down here on the bottom of the feet, you can see that there used to be probably some brass, um, brass feet down here that are missing. So we're kind of going to work with what we got here, working with what we got. And if you know me, if you're a Top Drawer RBA fan, you know that when stuff is damaged like this or, or already a little bit messed up, we like to work with what we got and that means terra clay paint yay terra clay paint first of all did you know that terra clay paint is my favorite paint from the dixie Bell paint line so terra clay paint let me tell you a little bit about this if you haven't seen it before i'm going to teach you all of the things today we're gonna have so much fun and play with this paint terra clay paint is paint that is actually made from clay you can see it right here in the 16 ounce can okay this is one of dixie bell's three paint lines it's thick, it's chunky, it's textured, you can stipple it on, you can create beautiful blended looks because it's water-based and it is my favorite paint. So this is a low VOC. VOCs just need a smell. So you can smell a little bit of dirt, to be honest. It smells like the earth. And this clay paint is heavily pigmented and heavily textured. There are 18 beautiful terra clay paint colors. Now, why would I choose terra clay paint for a piece that is already textured and that needs a little bit extra TLC? Well, because it's already kind of messed up and it's not a smooth finish. And when I use terra, I create stippling and texture where there was none before. We create old world distressed looks. Like it is by far my most favorite paint. Now here's the kicker. Terra clay paint right now is only $17.95 for this container. What? What? Dixie Bell is giving everybody the option to try this clay paint if you've never tried it before. Now is the time at $17.95. You guys, you don't know how long this can, this 16 ounce can is going to last you. It is going to last you 
forever in one day because it just goes and goes and goes. Since you can break it up and layer it, you can use water and mix it around, you can clump it on, you can make it nice and thick and then kind of chisel it back to show what's underneath, the possibilities are endless. This is an artisan paint. It is a lot of fun and it's super easy. So let's open this all up and play with terra clay paint so we can figure out what we're doing today. I will tell you that terra clay paint does like to have a, um, a natural fiber brush versus a you know smooth brush because of the fact that you're usually building texture on something and it is only available in these large 16 ounce containers which are a little bit different than what you're used to at dixie bell um dixie bell paint right you're used to the, the other little jars and these are not these are like little jars that you pry open and then you hammer shut they're also available in tiny little four ounce containers and those are on sale as well so if you haven't tried terra clay paint i will make you a convert because I want everybody to play with this and have fun. It is honestly so easy to create weathered, worn, distressed looks with this paint. You have no idea. So let's do it. Let's open up all the things and have some fun. Okay. I'm going to bring you nice and close to this little um, chest so you can see what we're working with here today. So like I said, this is a wood veneer over top of particle board and it has these metal brackets. Now, normally you would be coming here and you'd be taping these off or you'd be taking them off because you don't want to get paint on them. I want to see them. I love that patina. I love the crusty, rusty old. And to be honest, I will probably get out my patina paint when I get it to that point and make it look even more aged. Now, I'm not taking these off because I've learned the hard way before that this metal is fragile, okay? This might be brass, it might be not brass. It's brass in color, so who knows? Um, the hardware's kind of funky. There's some carvings on there, but I've learned the hard way in taking these little things off before and broken them. So I'm going to leave them on, but here's the thing you're gonna learn about terra clay paint. Terra clay paint, because it's water soluble, if I get the paint all over this, this little metal hardware, all I have to do is rub it back with a wet cloth and it's gonna take it right off. Until you seal your terra clay paint, you can take it and move it around and rub it and wet distress and do all of the things. So we're gonna start off with Onyx today. Onyx is the blackest of the terra clay paint. You can see it in there in the jar. It's thick, I want you guys to see it. See how it doesn't even drip? It's like this thick, thick pudding, and it is so fun. So my thought process for this little chest is to go heavy distressed, but in neutrals. We're gonna go black, we're gonna add creams, and we're gonna add white. So we're just going to basically build some texture. I'm gonna come up and start to stipple my paint on. Can you see how easy it is to apply this paint? I'm literally pat, pat, patting it on. I do wanna get it up close to the edges of these little metal, what do you call these dudes? Brackets, hinges, eschewins? I can't think of the name of what you would actually call them. What do you call these guys? <laughs> Decor pieces? Look, I've already got paint on me. It's 2.5 seconds into my video, I've already got paint all over me. Surprise. Okay, let's wipe that off because it's just gonna bother me because it feels wet. So see how there's paint on this little middle hinge? That's okay because I can either wait till it's dry and wipe it back or I can wipe it off now. Either way is gonna work. I'm going to build layers on this little piece. So I'm not really worried either way. You can wipe it off now or I can wait till it's dry and then come back in. I'm going to work on the first layer which is going to be black onyx. Why choose black for my first layer? Well, because I'm gonna be building lighter layers on top and those lighter layers are going to be wet distressed and pulled back to reveal the black underneath. I often do this vibe, this kind of dark apothecary style vibe of furniture when it comes to Terra because number one, it's so much fun but number two, it flies out the door for me. I have yet to paint anything in Terra Clay Paint that hasn't sold. Everything sells so fast. It's actually the paint that I go to when I repaint things. <laughs> if it didn't sell the first time around in like a beautiful vintage duck egg, I come back in and make it dark apothecary with Terra Clay Paint and it just, it goes. It goes right out the door, super fast, super fast. I see some people watching, hey Tammy. So this is black onyx going in over top of my veneer. I wonder if I'm gonna have to tape this sucker up here. I bet you're gonna have to tape that up there to get that off. Eh, I'll just hold it. So I'm gonna cover this veneer with this stippling manner. I'm going to get the paint 
around these little metal pieces and we're going to build up layers. And here comes my puppy dogs. You can't steal the show today, Luna. You're too low on the ground. I'm sitting up high on a piece of furniture today. No puppy love on the video today for you. So I'm just pushing it on. People tend to be a little bit afraid of Tara, I think. And, and here's the deal. Don't be afraid of Tara because anybody can do this. I'm not painting smoothly. I'm not going in around the edges. I'm doing this. I'm stabbing it on to create texture where there was no texture before, to hide the damages and to create an aged effect. So this black onyx is going on. I do recommend if you are playing with your Terra and you're building layers to really get those, those couple layers dry first before you move into the second layer. I do have a heat gun beside me here today so we can kind of play with that. But I would recommend you know going slow, slow and steady wins the race, letting those layers get dry so that you can build on them. But I kind of was stumped with this little guy because it's, it is Asian inspired. Do you remember the blue cabinet that was curvy like this that I painted? And I think I put the Elegant Avian transfer on that. Um, I purchased them both at the same auction. It was full of, of pieces like this, this Asian style. Um, and I think I got a lot of flack for painting that cabinet <laughs> because people freaked out. Oh my gosh, what's up an antique? It's not an antique, people. They wouldn't be selling the auction for like a couple bucks. Like I got everything for a couple bucks if it was antique. Plus, like we said, particle board. You saw the particle board under there. There wasn't particle board in antiques. So relax, relax, you'll be all right. Okay, so now we've got that black onyx on there. Remember, it's okay if I go over top of the hardware because you can simply either wait for it to dry or you can, take it off now when it's wet. I'm actually gonna think it's gonna be easier to take it all off when my piece gets dry and then just come back in and wipe this area really gently because I will want that gold. I will want that brass to shine. I do want brass. I like old looking brass, I'm a fan. Okay, so black onyx on this tiny cabinet. What else are we gonna do to build it up? Well, I'm going to start to add my layers. I'm going to come in and start to add some more touches of paint. So I've got a couple different brushes on the floor. They're all French tip, they're all well loved and they're natural fiber. I have Desert Tan, which is like a sandy, a sandy tan color. I do like this one a lot because when you mix it up with the black on here, and again, remember this is only my first layer. This is not, this is not what it's gonna look like. I don't mind the colors together when they get touching between desert tan and black onyx. I like both. So we're again, we're just stippling on our paint. We're gonna get this whole first layer on here. I'm gonna dry it with my heat gun. And then we're gonna come back in and keep adding layers and texture, layers and texture. Again, stippling on, not brushing on, I'm just Pat, pat, patting, anybody can do this. This is not hard, but I wanna get that first kind of darkness down. Okay, so now that I've got the first layer sitting on my piece, I'm gonna grab my heat gun, talk amongst yourselves while I blast this and get this part dry. If you can still hear me, I do have a mic on, so I might be able to talk through while this is getting dry. Isn't this cool hardware? Don't you love the color of old brass? I'm a sucker for that antique vintage brass color. Okay. So like I said, if you were painting this on your own, you would definitely be waiting for these layers to get dry before coming in with the second layer. So now I'm gonna take that same brush that I had with the desert tan on it, and I'm going to continue to build the layers over top of the onyx. I'm gonna keep this little sections that are, what would you call them, recessed. I'm gonna let them stay black. And again, I don't care if this gets on the hinges because remember, you can remove with water. And we're just gonna to start to 
build up our layers. I've got this little chest balanced on the top of a cedar chest, <laughs> a little precariously up here, but that's okay. I can catch it if it falls. Does anybody have any questions about terra clay paint? Will you have me here? I'm happy to answer them. If I don't see them as they fly by the screen, I can always come back in and answer them <clears throat> afterwards. You can also check out my YouTube, which I have linked in the description so that you can go see all of the crazy, amazing looks that I've created with Terra. But like I said, with this new price point so that everybody can try it, we really wanted to make sure that everybody has the opportunity to try this paint. And by dropping the price like that, it's like a gift for you guys to get out there and get shopping. Because if you even just grab two of these Terra colors and started learning how to blend them together, you are going to be flabbergasted when you see the amazing looks that you can create. I would be happy with just Terra and no other paint to be, to be honest. It's uh, kind of my jam. Terra is my fave. Okay, so now that we've got the desert tan mixed in with the onyx, I know you guys are all looking at me thinking it's hot mess, but trust me, trust me, we are going to keep going. So now I'm going to go into the brush that I dipped into my Moonbeam, but I'm not going to use Moonbeam. I want to go a little bit creamier. We're going to go into Prairie Dawn. Prairie Dawn is like, it's not white, but it's definitely, definitely creamier of a color. I just want to kind of get it up and in the center because I kind of want the center to be the lightest. And I will come up as close as I can to the edge of that little brass plate. Don't worry. If you're tuning in late and you're panicking because I'm painting over the, black, the brass plate, don't panic. I'm going to come back in and wipe it all off when I'm finished. This is a process. This is a process. Okay, loving that. The moonbeam that I grabbed might be too, too light. Let's touch a little bit of moonbeam on here. Yeah, the moonbeam might be too white for what I want. I'm going to stick with the Prairie Dawn, which is that creamier color. And I'm just going to keep pouncing it on, covering the other layers that we did. And then I'm going to get out the water and we're going to hose this sucker down and we're going to start to pull back. Obviously not this bottom section where I, I really did a lot of mud repair, but for sure at the top where the wood is underneath. And we're going to start to create a really pretty effect. So you, you are welcome to brush it if you prefer. I just am a big fan of the stippling. I feel like it looks a little bit more natural when the paint blends together and it does make my job a little bit easier when I'm pulling all of the colors together. So now I'm going to start to do this. I'm going to start to spray with water and thin out some of that paint. By spraying with water, the paint is getting thinner. So I am still covering what's on here, but I'm doing it in a lighter manner. I'm not creating those big peaks and valleys that I was before. And I'm not spraying this piece yet because I will be adding rust and crust and drips. Just not yet. I do like how you can see a little bit of the wood over there. The wood grain is kind of peeking through a little bit. I'm going to keep going with the Prairie Dawn. So did you guys get a chance to see my life decoupage paper that we worked on last week? I did post a couple videos to my Instagram. If you're not following me on Instagram, you can go do that at the top drawer RBA and you can check out the work that we worked on last week, applying that decoupage paper to the small little chest that is posted. The final results are up there and I will have a YouTube with all of the pieces out on that probably by this weekend. So now you're going to start to see how the black sits in all the creases. Can you see those beautiful creases right there? Really pretty creases and it's really sitting on like the dark soaks in and then the light goes on the top. So we're just going to keep building up these layers. I'm not even close to being done yet and we're going to drench this thing in water pretty soon and pull a bunch of this back. But for now, I just need to pat on this lighter color to see if I can get it to be ready to be distressed. And again, you can still see I'm using the same padding motion. This is not hard. Anybody can do this, I promise. 
this is the easy way to paint. Remembering that terra clay paint is technically an artisan paint. This is the paint that you use to get crafty, to create those beautiful apothecary worn out looks, to create those gorgeous distressed looks. You can do that all with this paint, simply by just patting, not even getting in here and painting. You're, you're paint patting. That's, that's like patent the name, paint patting, <laughs> paint patting. So I'm still going on between a little bit of this moonbeam, which is the white that you're seeing, but mostly I'm, I'm just still applying the Prairie Dawn. Let's lift up this little hardware and go underneath. And continue. So if you were to actually go in a dark to light pattern like this, like say black to gray to cream to white, and you were just like doing this padding motion, you're basically creating like a dry brush effect. Very similar to when you go in with a little bit of brush, brushed on paint from your brush versus like painted on, you're able to really get a stone look if you wanted to call it that. But for now, this is where we're at. And now I'm going to show you what's up next. So now, I'm going to put my brush down and we're going to grab my heat gun. We're going to get this dry a little bit more because I really want this to dry in so that when the color is dry, I can see the difference. When terra clay paint is wet, the value of the color is a lot different than when it's light. It dries up a lot lighter as it gets going versus when it's wet. When you seal your terra clay paint, the true color will come back. You'll see that a lot, especially with like the pinks and the purples, the vibrancy of it all. All right, so now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna grab a rag. I have a bunch of rags sitting on my lap, okay? And I'm gonna take a rag and I'm gonna start to wet distress. All right, now remember, I actually had a big band of mud sitting right here underneath this paint. I don't want to get my mud. I'm gonna just start to pull back some of these edges to let's start to age our piece and wear our piece. This is where Terra shines when it comes to um, being able to distress it. It is much, much different than when you are using regular paint. This just allows you to really pull back. If you wanted to like saturate it, you can really pull back and show the color that's underneath. You wanna come in even closer so you can see? Okay, I'm gonna aim you down a little bit. So this paint is, is not dry by a long shot. This paint is actually still super wet, but by tapping it and removing some of the paint, we're gonna let the wood that's underneath show through. We're going to distress those edges and move the paint. Remember, you can still move this paint. It's not locked in until it's sealed. So this is where the magic starts to happen. You can do this with spraying. It's gonna drip. I just put a towel down here to catch Remember I told you I'm painting on a cedar chest? Yeah, a cedar chest that I just freshly sanded and got the top completely naked for and now I'm sitting on top of it painting. That's not very smart, that's not smart. I see Marietta talking about how she restored some old brass. So this brass is gonna be able to be rubbed, this paint can get rubbed off of all of this brass because it's, it's water based and you can remove it. So I, I'm just gonna come in and wipe it off of all of this at one point, not right now, because I probably will wait until I'm literally completely done, and then come back in and just wipe off from the edges. I prefer an aged brass, to be honest. I would um, rather have like aged up old looking brass than new shiny brass. It's just my favorite. Like that's the only way you're gonna catch me reusing Batwing hardware, is if it's like old, decrepit looking Batwing hardware and I'm making like a spooky, a spooky look. It's super easy to take off of your metal because like I said, not sealed means you can still move it around. And I learned the hard way before by trying to take off this hardware. It, I've broken it too many times. I don't wanna break it. I like it too much. So remove all of the paint from those areas, super simple. I don't have to do it now, but now that I've started, I can't stop. <laughs> now that I've started, I wanna see what it looks like. 
So this paint is going to keep drying and it's going to take a long time to dry too, depending on the amount of um, water that you end up using on your piece. Sometimes when you see me create with Tara, I use so much water that my pieces take like a full 24 hours to dry because they are just saturated, saturated. And this clay paint will hold the moisture in it. It, it does take a little bit longer to dry the thicker you apply it. Okay, so now what's next? Well, now we have this really great finish. You can pull off your Terra. You could use a spatula and scrape it. Remember, we talked about how to wet distress, but by really just taking my finger and rubbing it along these edges, I'm gonna be able to start to pull it back. Allowing some of that wood to show through is what's gonna make this piece look old. It's almost gonna look like a, a chest that somebody like abandoned maybe, or like left out by the ocean. I don't know, my imagination is taking off with me. But I do love to create things that look really super, super old. You guys know that that's my favorite. And if there is a paint that's gonna allow you to do that, it's gonna be Terra Clay Paint. So remember this new gift to you sales price, $17.95. There's no reason why y'all can't try this paint too because you're gonna flip and love it. It's so, it's so delicious. And so easy to use. Like look how fast I created that look. Look at how beautiful and textured this piece is so far. And I haven't even done any of the aging with wax that I like to do. I haven't done any really of this heavy distressing. I like to take um, some of the paint. See, I have a smaller brush down here so that I could get in here. So we can take this black onyx and you can start to bring it in around these edges. I actually have a chocolate over here. The one thing Tara does not have is a, a beautiful brown. So I tend to use a lot of chocolate or pine cone um, with Tara. So I'm gonna actually grab a little bit of this chocolate and I'm gonna mix it in with the onyx. Now, now that we've got it here, watch this. We're gonna take my spray misting bottle and we're gonna start to smoke out the edges and I'm gonna start to create some beautiful drips. I'm a big fan of runny, drippy texture. Remember how we talked about this paint being water soluble? This is what we're going for. We're going for a beautiful aged look using the onyx and also coming in with a little bit of the chocolate, which is the brown. You can also do this with wax, but I just, I really like the look that you can achieve by just spraying and getting those beautiful drips and moving that paint around. So this, this box is like fake old because it is not a true antique, but we're gonna make it look super old by the time I'm done with it. There's going to be probably rust and crust on here. I'm gonna darken out all of these edges like that. I really like that. How are you liking this kind of distressed look? So the colors I've used so far are Onyx, which is that beautiful black. I've used a little bit of the Prairie Dawn and the Moonbeam, as well as uh, a little bit of the Desert Tan. So that's really only a couple colors. If you wanted to try them in the four ounce, you could try all of those colors in the four ounce and see what kind of beautiful magic you could come up with. But this by far is my most favorite way to age a piece and make it look old. See these beautiful lines from the wood grain underneath with that dark onyx sticking in there? Perfection, perfection to me anyways. I know some people always look, my dad is, is famous for like, I show my dad something I've created like this that always looks super old or burnt or like dragged out from the ocean. He's like, yo, did you mean to do that? I'm like, I sure did. <laughs> That's just confirmation that I did a good job. He's like, did you mean to make it look like it was in a fire? I'm like, yes, you mean you don't like that? <laughs> to each their own, right? Not everybody can do uh, and accept a look like that I like, that kind of dark, burnt out, smoky look. It's a favorite for me, but some people just don't get it. They're not the biggest fans. That's okay, there's something for everybody out there. And again, just spraying and touching and moving that paint around. So good. Are you loving this so far? 
I freaking love an aged Tara look. Making it look old, layers at a time. Taking those drips down, definitely. Definitely my fave. Now I'm happy with the choice that I went for. I really wanted something to look ancient, to really accent this gorgeous hardware, to really push it to being, just pushing it to being as old looking as possible. Let's take some of this paint off this hinge down here. Won't this look great if I get out that green patina and the copper maybe and change the edges to be like a green patina, just kind of dripping down, making it look mossy. See how you can really manipulate this paint? You are in control of how you want it to look. The drips, the age, the layers, by far the prettiest paint, prettiest paint to use. Hey Patty, I see you watching, you back from your trip? I know she, Patty went to Hawaii recently, lucky duck. I saw your photos. She's been living the life. We were gonna go to Florida, but we canceled our trip because of all the rain that they're getting this week. They're getting like torrential downpours in Florida. It's madness right now in Florida. I thought rather than sitting in a condo looking at each other during the rain, we'll just postpone our trip a little bit. <laughs> we don't need to go when the rain is happening. I wanna add a little bit more white down here. Got a little dark with the distressing. You can always do paint flicking too. I tend to like to take my paint and get a really wet brush and add like flicks of black to the corners or little dots of almost like runny paint. I don't know why I enjoy that look so much, but I really, really do. So I'll probably come in and do that after as well. What are you thinking? How do we like this look so far? Is a heavy distress the look for you? Or is it something that you're kind of like having to be turned on to? Because every time I do it, I love it more and more and more. You can see the detail of the wood peeking through where that gorgeous onyx is sitting in the edges. You see how easily I was able to wipe the paint off the hinges and then adding that little distress around the edges I might even come in and just take this white, see if I can't do a little bit of dry brushing over top, just to give it a little bit more age. I like it. It looks like a cross between stone and just like old, old, old. And for me, totally my fave. I can get lost in doing looks like this. You see me, I'm going to be covered in paint by the time I'm done. You'll see me doing a lot of finger painting, a lot of padding, a lot of running with water, really getting the look that I want, that kind of organic feel, that earthy feel. But this is the look I'm going for. Old world, kind of burnt out, really plays off those gorgeous metal pieces, doesn't it? Really, really looks great. I freaking love it. I always love it. So, so different, right? So I went from, let's see if I can, oh, I don't know if I can turn this little box. There's so many things. Remember I told you I'm painting on top of a cedar chest? Let's see, it might be safer to move the camera rather than the chest. So we had the brown veneer that was all broken over top of particle board. Particle board people, particle board, not antique. Filled in with Dixie Bell's mud to cover the edges from where all that veneer had bubbled and ripped off. And then that wood color. You can see how it really loses the pop of the hinges with this brown color. You're gonna find that when you add a lighter color, your hardware is just going to pop right out. This to me is a thousand times better. I'm nowhere near done. I'm going to start to pull layers off. See how you can tap where it was wet and remove some of that paint? See how it's just like, you could take a piece of tape right now. I wonder if I can do it. 
Let's see if I can do it. No, oh, you're lucky day. I have tape right near me. So I'm going to take a piece of blue painter's tape. Now, I'm not going to do this down here. I had the mud, but I can do it up here. Let's see if I can get anything to come off. So if you take your tape and you rub it on and then you pull it off, sometimes you can remove some of the pieces to give it a, a well-worn look. It's not dry enough yet. <laughs> it's still wet. So when you, when you pull off the paint that's there and show what's underneath, See how we're starting to get it right there? You're gonna get authentic chipping. You're gonna get authentic old kind of world looks versus something that looks fake. It's gonna look like it was supposed to be worn off. You're gonna get way more authentic than if you were to come in here and do sanding. Using that tape is gonna pull off that top layer. See that? Can you see? Do you need to come in even closer? See if I can do it one more time. Hey, Patty. Patty says she likes this finish. I know you like it, Patty. I love it too. I know it's not everybody's cup of tea, but nor am I, nor should we. We should be painting what makes our heart happy. See how it pulled off that top layer and is showing that beautiful little patina underneath? See, it's left there on the tape. You can just keep going. You can pull off as much as you'd like. I've got pieces where I've painted so heavily on purpose and then come in with a spatula and dragged off the top layers to create a very, very, very authentic look. See how it pulls off just that little bit? So it's almost like it's worn finish. See that? Pretty, 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 pretty. So I give you permission to go play with your paint. Have some fun because that's what painting should be is fun. This is all done with Terra Clay paint. I will probably get this done I would hope by the weekend. I tend to fall down the rabbit hole, especially when I start to really love it. And this piece was, I was struggling. I didn't know what colors I was gonna paint it. I just knew I wanted a finish that was gonna give me texture. Because of all the repairs that had to be done on this piece, um, I really felt like a textured finish would suit it the best. I think what I'll end up doing is probably coming in and adding even more, even more dark and drippy. Like I, I like to over, overdo my aging like I when I say I want this to look old I want it to like look like abandoned in a forest for a hundred years old if you've made it this far in the video that means you are here to see the final product so thanks for hanging out with me for that long this project continued the same process that you saw in the live format video where I continued to apply the Terra all the way around the box I then came in with that chocolate from the Chuck Mineral paint line and a little bit of the onyx to add drips and runs down the piece, same as you saw me do on the front of this project. Obviously still painting over the brass, it doesn't really matter because I will be wiping it back with a rag. Remember, terra clay paint is water soluble so you can get in here and pull it off where you'd like. That also means wet distressing. You're very easily able to pull back the paint and show the wood underneath. Obviously my handy dandy tip of the day will be do not pull back the terra where you have Dixie Bell's mud underneath because then you will just see white and you also take the chance of pulling back the white mud because I did not seal my mud with boss before I began. If you are doing a raised stencil design or you're using mud and you want to make sure that it is going to be nice and strong, you can definitely seal that with a clear coat or you can come in and seal it with bonding boss. All of those things will prevent any of that mud from becoming water soluble and being able to be pulled back. It will be nice and strong. So here I am actually removing some of the paint so that I do see what is underneath. There was kind of like a band of painted wood around the edge of this piece. So pulling back around the bottom shows a little bit more black. Pulling back around the top showed a little bit more of the wood. You have a couple of options when you seal your terra clay paint and you do have to seal it. You're going to find that you're either going to use something that has a bit of a shine or something with zero shine. So if you want a little bit of a shine, the terra tough is the thing that is your go-to and that will give you a tiny bit of shine and it will lock in that terra paint so it will not move. FYI, if you are doing a transfer over top of terra clay paint, you must seal your piece before you apply a transfer. It will not stick to an open porous terra clay paint. 
your second option for sealing terra clay paint is to use the terra matte which is basically very flat it's basically a flat clear coat now remember when it comes to clear coats the flatter and less shine a clear coat has that means it's less durable so if you're putting this on a tabletop I would definitely recommend Terra Tough over the Terra Matte. Try the Terra Tough and the Terra Matte. See what you like better. I like them both for different reasons. The other handy tip is to use a nice smooth brush when you're applying your top coat because like I said before, this paint is reactivated by water. So if you come in super duper heavy handed and start like mashing your clear coat on and dragging it around, you're going to move your paint and all of your hard work. So I suggest go gentle, go very gentle on your first round of your sealant. And then after that first coat dries, come in and do it again. You can see me here applying my Terra Matte very, very gently, just gently brushing it on and waiting till the second coat to go a little bit more heavy handed. Also, the brush you see me using here is actually a brand new brush from Dixie Bell. This is a chip brush that is made from synthetic material. So it's a cheaper version of a, a kind of like a chip brush. It's only a couple dollars and it works really great for blind top coats because it's super duper nice and smooth. As always, after you get that top coat on, if you choose to add a little bit of gilding wax or some wax on top, that is a-okay. You can totally do that over top of your sealed terra clay paint. If you come in with wax on terra clay paint that's not being sealed, you're going to run the chance that it's going to really suck in and absorb into that clay, and you're not going to be able to get it manipulated and get the look that you're going for. Another handy tip is to really make sure your terra clay paint is dry. And that might take more than a day or so, depending on how thick you went with your texture. And this, my friends, is where we ended up. It's a finished product. Do you love it? Because I absolutely love it. I know that this look is not for everybody. I kind of said that in the video before, not everybody appreciates a super duper heavy distressed look, but I want this piece to look like it's 150 years old. And I think I succeeded in doing that. So that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed this Terra Clay Paint Makeover. I know that these longer videos actually are appreciated. Some people want to see every nitty gritty little detail. So in this version of my Terra Clay Paint box, you got to see it all. I hope you love it. Have a great day and I'll see you again next week. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.